Greetings everyone and welcome to my official launch of my Summer of Sony series of videos I'm planning to do. I decided since I've got three or four or five different Sony tape decks on the shelf ready to be gotten into that I would just uh, save them all for for the summer season and just get them all done. And in this video we're going to do an evaluation of this deck and see what it's all about and see what's wrong with it and all that kind of stuff. And then at the end of the season, we're going to, going to actually get into this deck and do the uh, transport service it very likely needs. Because uh, as you probably already know by watching my videos, these older Sony units, the grease in them turns into glue and that's no good. So they all have to be stripped down and cleaned up and re-greased. So that's the plan for this one. But uh, yeah, this is a very, very special cassette deck here. And I really wanted to, to at least take the time to initially uh, evaluate it first to see what it's all about and see what's wrong with it. Because it may take quite a lot for me to actually fix this one. Reason being is not only is it quartz lock direct drive and closed loop dual capstan, it's actually triple direct drive. There's the traditional capstan direct drive motor in there that is quartz locked. But uh, also, the, the uh, real drive in this is also direct drive. So, it's very, very complicated compared to most of the stuff I'm uh, familiar with. So, yes, this is the TCK 666ES, if I can talk. It's the number of the beast. And, uh, yeah, at the time this came out... In the mid-80s, there was only one model directly above this, and that's the 777, which does not have triple direct drive like this one. I'm not exactly sure how that one's set up. I'll get one eventually, but uh, for now, this one popped up and I had to jump all over it. This is a Japanese import, like many of mine are these days, because eBay from the U.S. has just gone to the dogs. They were just starting to get more reasonable for shipping estimates from eBay, but something happened again, and now all I see is $200 and $300 shipping estimates again, and that's not going to happen. So what did this one cost me? Well, I'm actually quite stunned to have gotten this for the price I did. I was watching the Japan auctions like I usually do through uh, From Japan, and uh, I'd been looking for one of these for quite some time, but... Uh, these things are unicorns, i got to tell you right now. They hardly ever come up for sale, and when they do, they're usually expensive. So, uh, I was looking on eBay one day, or on, not on eBay, on From Japan one day, and I happened to type the model number in, and then this one came up. And what was even crazier, nobody seemed to be bidding on it. So I thought, what the hell? I can't let this one dr just drive by me. I have to try for it. So, uh... I put, I think it was 200 bucks or so on it, and I didn't expect to get it. Oh, wait, maybe I, it was 250 Yeah, I think I let myself do 250 on it, because uh, these are very much unicorns. And, uh, yeah, I won it for 204 bucks. So, basically, this cost me the same amount of money as my XK007 on the shelf. So, I can't believe I got it for that cheap. But I did, and it's here, and it's ready to uh, tell me what it's all about. So, uh, I guess we'll get into it and explore the features and quirks first. And uh, I believe the seller said that it doesn't stay playing. However, I will tell you right now, I couldn't resist myself. As soon as the box came open here and I unpacked it, I tried it out, and it instantly worked. So, I don't know exactly what was going on with it. And the other thing is, I should tell you, I've already had the cover off. I saw somebody over at Tapeheads having an issue with their 555 ES2. And there was something going on with the uh, the uh, direct drive control on his machine. And I wanted to get into here to see how mine compared. And whether or not I could offer any advice to somebody who's obviously more experienced than I am. But... Uh, 
yeah, I've had the cover off. I've seen the uh, direct drive setup in this thing, and uh, I found some bad circuit glue on a capacitor on the uh, motor control board that I have now cleaned up, and maybe that was the problem. I don't know. But uh, like I said before, all of these old Sonys, they have bad grease in the transport. That will have to be serviced. It's not optional. So yeah, there's still going to be lots to do, and... Uh, well, I'm working on all these other Sony decks immediately to the uh, right of me right now. I'm going to give it some time to break something else. Maybe we'll have more to do on it by the time that comes around. But uh, yeah, first things first, let's power it on. Okay, display is working. It was working before too, the last time I tried this. And the tape source is working. I've heard that when these lamps go out, they lose the ability to switch between tape and source, so both of those lamps are currently working. I may want to preemptively uh, change those lamps. I don't know yet. We've got support for all four tape types. That's cool. I like that. Meter range is shifting properly the way it's supposed to. Got our fine bias control here. Record calibration for both channels, not just both channels at the same time. Usually these uh, controls over here will control the uh, fine adjustment of the levels going into the record amplifier. I like to see that. So we've got Dolby on and off. That seems to be engaging properly. B and C. Oh, that control's dirty. You can see the uh, the filter light flickering, so we're gonna have to clean some of these controls. And uh, yeah, here's the magic part of it right here. Everything behind this. Three head, three motor, laser amorphous. In fact, these are the same heads, I'm told, as uh, what's found in the TCK81 and the 555ES. And the 777, so they should be very special. I've seen uh, over at AMT Audio's website, he actually plotted the frequency response of these heads in a uh, TCK81, and they were dead flat to below 20 hertz. So uh, I'm hoping I got the same thing here. I'm not sure. Let's pop the door open here. Okay, and it's got a case of Sony door slam syndrome. I'm going to have to deal with that. The uh, the O-rings inside, the cylindrical dampers in these, tends to fail over time, and I'm going to have to replace that, I'm sure. Maybe do something with the damping grease. And let me feel here. Both cap stands are turning, so the cap stand motor is working. Whether or not it's playing at the right speed or not, we'll have to see. Let me check the uh, pinch rollers. I've got new ones, but these are in good shape. At least that one is. And so is that one. I may not need to change those. Now, I'm going to put you back on the tripod here because I want to get the microscope in there to have a look at these heads. So, let me fire up my other phone here. And I will get up my, out my... Uh, microscope. I think we've got enough room in here to get the microscope in there to see the heads. So let's see if we can get a picture off this thing. Yes we can. And I'm gonna get still shots of both of these heads just to see what kind of shape they're in. Let me go all the way up to two times magnification on this because I want the best possible picture of these uh, head gaps. Okay, there's the record head right there. Let me see if I can get a shot of that. I'll get a couple of shots of it. It looks like they need cleaning. There's some pitting on the head. Oh, come on, give me a picture.
They do look a little worn. Not too bad. We'll find out how it sounds in due time. Let's go over to the playhead now. If I can get a decent shot of it. It's kind of hard to work around the... Uh... The door here. Playhead looks better than the record head does, but that's usually the way it goes, because... Tape goes over the record head first. So that's where you usually find the most wear. Okay, I got enough pictures there. Now the reason I want to wait until the end of the Sony summer season here is because uh, I'm really uncertain about this uh, triple direct drive stuff on this thing. Because uh, if either of the uh, real drive motors are not working properly and the tape tension is off, we could be snapping tapes with this thing. And I have a, uh, a uh, torque gauge coming now so I can fully service these dual capstan machines a little better. So I really want to wait for that to get here before I uh, really dig into this machine. I'm going to put in my test tape. The home theater is up and running. So we'll see if it plays today. But before that, I want to show you this real cool feature this thing has because of those uh, direct drive reel motors in there. It's got a, a two-speed wind set up here. Okay, you got your usual speed. If you press it again, Okay, there we go, yeah. It's got a high speed and a low speed. And it looks like rewind is a bit inconsistent. Okay, that's high speed, I think. Oh no, that's high speed. I gotta get used to this, guys. Don't mind me. All right, let's hit play and see if we get any audio out of her. Oh yeah, we got audio. I gotta say, playback sounds amazing. I cannot get over this high-speed winding system. Look how fast that thing's moving. There's nothing wrong with this. It's working. Well, I assume there's nothing wrong with this. We might still be having some tape tension issues, and I won't know if that's the case until... Uh, until the uh, torque gauge gets here, but I'm gonna try the other side here with the Dolby C recording. Are we between tracks here? What's going on? Probably. Heads might be a little out of alignment. They usually are after all this time. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with this, at least for now. Well, except for the door slam issue and uh, very likely old grease in there. But uh, yeah, there's really nothing much to do on this machine right now, so... Uh, yeah, we'll talk about these things over here in a second, towards the end of the video. I just wanted to get into this first, but uh, what I want to do right now is I want to check the wow and flutter just as a uh, basic pre-service kind of 
thing. So let me uh, get set up for this and we'll find out. I'm going to use my uh, Fix Your Audio reference tape and my uh, Technics reference tape to see how this goes. Okay, I should start this. Yeah, I gotta fix that door slam issue. It's irritating. All right, we'll do fix your audio first. Start that playing. I'm waiting for a signal to show up on the meters here. And then we'll adjust the headphone output accordingly. All right, we're getting 3,000 eight from this deck and 0.05% wound flutter. That's not bad, especially for a pre-service check here. Quickly going down. Well, maybe not. 0 0.05 is pretty good, I guess. I expected this to be lower, even considering that it needs service yet, but uh, and it's coming down a bit, 3,007. It's really not bad. I'll try to get that lower. Like I said, this thing's been sitting around doing who knows what for the last 40 years, so uh, we'll see if we can get her down. But uh, I'm going to shut this one off, and we're going to go in with my Technics tape. We're going to see what that one runs at. Start playing. It's in the leader right now. Three thousand six. That's about right. Wow and Flutter looks to be instantly a little more stable, but uh, as I've mentioned before, you can't really measure Wow and Flutter properly this way. You need a dedicated tape for that. It's been made on a full track machine and other such gear that I don't have. We can only get a rough idea from these uh, tapes that I've made on uh, consumer level machines. As long as I see below 0 0.05, I'm happy especially for these direct drive units. But it's showing real flashes of brilliance here already. So, uh, I think once I get this service, it's going to be amazing. Because there's only one capstan belt in there to worry about. That's it. There's no real drive idler. It's all direct drive, this thing. So, yeah. I'll probably do a full recap of the uh, motorboard and whatnot. And that's really the reason why I want the, uh, the torque cassette is because after I recap the motorboard, what happens to the direct drive real motors? Do I suddenly get entirely too much tension on the tape or what? I just need to know these things. So that's why this this particular unit is, is going to bookend my uh, Summer of Sony plans here. Just continuing to watch it for a bit. The issue the guy had over at uh, Tape Heads with his 555 ES2 was uh, the, uh, I believe the tape speed destabilized over time. I think he said it went uh, slower. And I just kind of want to watch this for a little while and see if mine does that, too. It doesn't look like it is doing that, but uh, I think his machine did that over, like, hours. And I don't have time to sit here and watch this thing for hours. Because I want to show you the insides of this thing also. But yeah, I think it is very likely we'll get this thing below 0.04 at the very least. 
And most importantly, it's not shutting off the way the seller said it did. So what the heck was going on with it? I've got a mostly fully working 666 ES right out of the box here. What's going on? And this is the second time it's done this. Worked just flawlessly right off the bat. All right, let's shut this off. It's clearly not going to act up in any reasonable time frame for me. So, uh, yeah, let's power down the laptop now and we'll get inside the unit. Capstan's still running just fine. All right, folks, the deck is now open and we can see all the goodness inside. First thing I want to do is check out this motor board here and this entire motor assembly because it's really unique. We can't really get a good look at the uh, direct drive real motors because they're kind of buried in there, but uh, yeah, they're back over here in the front. But uh, we can look at the, uh, the uh, capstan drive set up here. We do have a an old belt here. I don't know how good it is. It feels all right. I may replace it. I may not. Just kind of moving it to the side here so I can take a look at the uh, flywheel condition. It does look really dirty, at least on that particular one. Yeah, that belt is probably about ready for a replacement. I can do that. I've got belts. I'm not sure if I've got the right belts, but I've got belts. But it actually really does feel fairly grippy yet, so maybe after I clean it up it'll work. It depends how stretched it is. Anyhow, you can see back here where the uh, circuit glue issue was. It's this capacitor right here. It was glued down right here. <clears throat> and this is the control chip for the capstan motor. We've got two others in here. There's another one here and one here. Oh wait, you can't see that. Got to zoom you out here so you can see better. Okay, there's one here and one here. And these two are for, for the real drives. They're all the same chip, all three of them. So uh, hopefully none of them is having problems because uh, I don't know where I would ever find them. I hope I don't need to change those. Anyhow, yeah, real bad circuit glue there. And I really want to uh, recap this whole board just to make sure it stays working, assuming it is working. I don't know how well it's working. But uh, yeah, taking a look around the rest of the unit here. See if I can do this properly. Here's the power supply. I think I will likely want to recap it. I don't know if it needs it, but uh, it's something I like to do on my uh, high dollar units like this. and whatnot. I have never seen capacitors like those silver ones before. Kind of weird, honestly. I wonder if those are audio caps. Anyway, that doesn't matter. I'm going to replace those with uh, Panasonic FR like I usually do. Probably got to order a bunch more capacitors, but that's okay. Oh yeah, those are audio capacitors. Look at this. Audio, audio, audio. They're TK 63 volt, 2200 microfarad. I will have to order those for sure. And I may uprate those as well, depending on, uh, on the dimensions and whatnot. That shouldn't be too hard. Let's see what's over on the other side. Oh, and you see how this uh, transformer is sort of angled over like that, that's intentional. This is to keep the magnetic fields coming off the transformer from interfering with anything in the heads. So, Sony was thinking, I would like to get into uh, 
this board here just to see what kind of capacitors it has. I'm already seeing one Elna and uh, yeah, just based on my experience with the uh, Technics DBX unit, I really don't want to keep any Elna capacitors inside these machines. Let me get this board off and we'll take a look. So let's look through here. Ah uh, yes, right where my thumb is, that's an Elna. I don't know exactly what's keeping this board down, but uh, I'll have to figure that out when it comes to the recapping time. I don't know how serious I'll get with the recapping on this thing. Mainly I just want to get rid of the, all of the Elnas I find because they don't hold up over time. But uh, yeah, it's likely I'll have to desolder this wire here and uh, and whatnot in order to even get at this board, which is fine. That's easy enough. So yeah, triple direct drive. There are only a few cassette decks ever made that had a setup like this with the real drives being direct drive. The most obvious one I can think about is the Nakamichi Dragon. That one's four-way direct drive. Both reels and both capstans are direct drive in those things. And I believe Revox has a couple of models like that as well. But uh, other than that, the only other machine I can think of that's set up like this is a, also a Sony. And uh, actually, I've got a couple of vintage brochures here. I'm going to show you that model in a second. But uh, first, let me get this back together, and we'll talk about the rest of the uh, summer of Sony subjects. I'm simply supporting my efforts on servicing. Okay, my brain's not doing alliteration very well today. Okay, folks, so here are the three main subjects of my summer of Sony. Well, three of the four. Technically, I'm going to also try to get my... Uh, grandparents Sony TCK45 into this whole summer of Sony thing as well, but uh, that's only if I've got time for it. Otherwise, that deck is going to be whenever I can get around to it. It still needs a little bit of touch-up work to finish it off, but uh, we'll get to that as, as the time allows. Let me see if I can move my uh, solder station here. First up... We've got the TCK55, and we've already had this on the channel. We know what's wrong with it. It's working mostly perfectly, except for the uh, the uh, clutch in the uh, in the real drive isn't working very well. And the whole idea behind this is, I've got my TCK61 over here. It's now a parts machine, and I'm going to try to to use it to fix all three of these decks. I just basically wanted to see how many decks I could service with just one parts unit. And uh, this unit might be getting the uh, the uh, idler clutch assembly from that unit. It depends what's wrong with the one that's in here. But uh, yeah, it'll get the same general transport service that the 61 got. But uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I am not planning a full transport service on video for any of these. You guys have already seen that. You can just refer back to my TCK61 video if you need to, to know the ins and outs of full transport service on this, because all three of these use the same transport. What I will do is I will show the issues I find specific to these units and whatever else I didn't cover in that transport service video, like the headlock coming off. But uh, yeah, when you do a, an old Sony like this, Every part of the transport has to be stripped down, cleaned up, and re-greased. It's not optional on any of these. But uh, yeah, the, the 55, all it needs is the idler serviced on it, I think. Plus the usual re-greasing and stuff, and new belts and other such things. The one below it, TCK65. This is one of the fancier two-head machines Sony came out with back in the late 70s and early 80s. As you can see, this one's absolutely filthy. 
and there's more wrong with it than that. As you can see, the top cover is severely damaged. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know what's wrong with it. I have not tried to do anything with it yet. So this should be interesting. Like I said, same transport as the 55 and the and the 61 and uh, several other models that Sony has. So yeah, I don't know much about this. It supports all four tape types, again, like the fancier units do. Don't know if any of this works. We'll find out when this video is uh, underway. This may have more wrong with it that requires more than one video, so uh, that's why I may not have time for my grandparents' deck. And then below that is the big boy. This is a TCK-75. This one came from Japan. And believe it or not, this one was way in budget. Nobody wanted it because the uh, tape door didn't stay closed. But uh, as you can see, the tape door is currently staying closed. And I'm betting that's because the it's got old grease in it. It just hardened up and uh, wouldn't stay closed anymore for the previous owner. And by the time it got all the way here from Japan, it was now staying closed. So, uh, yeah... The grease must have softened up enough in there to uh, hold the door closed. So I basically got this thing for a song. This was under budget. As you uh, may remember from my other videos, I budget 200 bucks for three head machines, including shipping. And this one was under that. So uh, I don't know if it was very far under that, but I know I paid 100 bucks or something like that for the deck itself, and very few people bid against me. It, it was basically like the 666 ES, only uh, with an older unit, and I got it even cheaper. So, uh, yeah. The interesting thing about the 75 is their version of the TCK-75 is our version of the TCK-81. And uh, Sony did some weird stuff in the late 70s with this. They basically got the 81 much sooner than we did, and they called it the 75. Our version of the TCK-75 is their version of the TCK-75, except with different heads and a different power switch. That's the only difference. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of confusing the way they did this. This one has a Sendust and Ferrite head. Our version of the 75 has a Ferrite and Ferrite head plus the different power switch. So yeah, I don't know which is the better heads or not. So we're going to have to find out the hard way, I guess. But again, I don't know what's wrong with it. Haven't really done anything at all with it. It hasn't even been powered up. But uh, yeah, this one's got calibration bias tones in it. And uh, it's real fancy. So I hope I can bring this around, despite the fact that it's missing all the screws from one side. So, yeah, this may not be a permanent part of my collection of uh, silver Sonys or not, but, uh, yeah, basically I'm collecting all the really interesting silver Sonys I can find that are basically period, or, uh, period uh, matching my uh, grandparents' tape deck. That's the idea anyway. And then any other Sonys I get will be whatever floats my boat, as it were, like the... Uh, 666 ES here. So let's take a look at my vintage brochures here that I got to go with these. These all came from Japan along with my uh, TCK 75 there. And I'll get into this and show you which future models I'm looking for. Man, I love vintage brochures. I've been collecting them since I was a kid. I'm so glad to have these. And yes, they're all in Japanese, of course. There's our K55 right there, and there's our K65 right there. Already got those, don't need to go into them. Let's see here. 0.04% WRMS Wow and Flutter. I hope I can get those numbers out of this transport. We'll see. They are both using BSL motor technology, which is basically a direct drive motor connected to a traditional belt drive. So yeah, should be able to get pretty decent numbers out of them, assuming I've got the right uh, belts for that. 
There's the K75 right there. Basically the one we've got sitting right next to us right now. And like I said, this is their version of the TCK81. So yeah, it's basically the same deck. Can't wait to get into that and see how it is. Let's see, it's got the same 0.04 wow and flutter spec right there because uh, like I said, same transport. Here's the K45M. This is the uh, analog meters version of my grandparents' tape deck. So this is the closest I am ever going to come to actually having the right uh, factory brochure for my grandparents' tape deck. I've never found any other brochure that has that deck in it. So, uh, yeah, I am not interested in going after this model because, like I said, I've got my grandparents' deck. I don't need that one. Now, over here, we've got the... TCK or TC15F. Not interested in this one at all. It's kind of too basic for me. And we've got the U60 here. I'm not interested in the U series at all. Again. But uh, down here, this is the other ultra special deck. Let me see if I can zoom in. The TCK88. This is the only other Sony deck to my knowledge along with the K88 II version that has triple direct drive. Yes, folks, this is the same type of motor drive setup as uh, the 666 ES uses, except it's drawer load. That's why these are so hard to find and so expensive when you do find them. But it is on my hit list. I'm going to get one of these eventually. I don't know when, but uh, yeah, I hope to get one at some point. And as you can see, these also have LCD meters in them, which is something else Sony did back then. But uh, yeah, let's turn the page here, see if we can find any more cool stuff. And yes, we can. U30, U2, U4, 20F, none of these interest me. I'm not going for those. Over here, we've got the K40. That is the same transport as my grandparents' deck has. It's actually more properly the uh, version of uh, the analog version that, uh, yeah, the K45M over here, I think, is slightly different. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I might be getting confused here. Anyway, I don't think I'll be after the K40. I'm just basically sticking to kit to the K45 and up unless I need to get parts for my grandparents deck and I need a parts machine. The K96R, that one's another interesting one. That one's auto reverse. One of the first auto reverse decks that Sony made, I think, in this type of design. And the other rare one that I'm interested in getting is this one down here, the K80. I believe Trevor's Bench did a video on this one. It's quartz lock direct drive. That's why I want it. But uh, yeah, it does give the wow and flutter for this one. If I can find it here. Yeah, 0.03 WRMS. So yeah, I really want to get one of these. And I may have to get it from Japan. We'll see how that goes. Over on the next set of pages here, we've got uh, portable units. Not interested. Might be interested, because these are open reel machines. I still don't have a good open reel machine, and that reminds me, I gotta finish working on my open reel machine. Maybe we'll do that as part of the summer of Sony, if we've got time. And uh, yeah, over here, El Cassette. That's a format I really would like to explore one of these days. Let's see, I don't know if this means direct drive or not down here for this machine, but uh, I'll have to research that. I'm not really that interested in portable machines, but uh, if it's El Cassette, I might be interested. Especially if uh, these are all continuing to be overpriced as they currently are. I watched a TIAC El Cassette unit go for something like a thousand bucks on from Japan, so not really that... Uh, keen on getting El Cassette in a hurry at those prices. But yeah, these are all the accessories that go with these Sony units, like the remotes and whatnot. And 
I don't know if I'm interested in getting any of that stuff. We'll take a look at this other brochure real quick, but it's very similar to the one we just looked at. So, uh, yeah, basic marketing stuff on this page. Here's another look at the K55. I have high hopes for it. It sounded really good when I fired it up for its evaluation video. There's another look at the 65 and the 88. There are actually two versions of the 88. There's the 88 1 and 2, and the difference between them is the 2 version has uh, metal cassette support. And it's the same thing up here for this K80. There's a 2 version that has uh, metal cassette support. I'm not picky. I don't care which one I get. Just as long as I have one. And here's the 96R again, the auto reverse machine. There are other auto reverse machines in the Sony Silver line. I may get one, I may not get one. It's not a priority. I don't like auto reverse. And over here we've got the K50, the K40. As we saw before, the K50 looks like it's got music search built into it. I don't care. I think I'm fine with owning a 55 and not a 50. K40, again, don't care. 20F, really don't care. U4, U2. Oh, this one's got the 6150 SD in it. That's an older unit. Kind of surprised to find that in here. Anyhow, we've got more portables. More open reel machines. I'm down for one more open reel machine. I just don't know what form it's going to take. I think I would like a Pioneer Fluoroscan unit, actually, instead of uh, anything from Sony. Here's the Elkaset stuff again. Yeah, that must be an Elkaset machine. Has to be, because it's in the Elkaset section, and it's got an EL part number on it. Maybe I'll have to look for that one. Anyhow, that's basically my vintage brochures here, and uh, yes, exciting summer of Sony. I cannot wait to fully service this deck, but I'm going to have to because it's got no content for me right now. Like I said, i got to wait for my torque cassette to come in to even get started on this. So uh, yeah, it's going to be an exciting summer, I think. I'll see you next time with the uh, TCK55 in this series.